In less than six days, the 9th Legion of the Space Marines will be added to Horus Heresy Legions. The Blood Angels are amongst the most iconic Space Marine chapters of the Warhammer 40,000 universe, but during the early part of the Horus Heresy they were sidelined by Warmaster Horus himself who sent them off to campaign at the furthest edges of the Imperium. Nevertheless, they were to return and play a critical role in the final battles of the Heresy. During the course of the Great Crusade, the Blood Angels became known as excellent shock troops. It did not matter if their foes threw up hasty barricades or hunkered down in their bunkers, sheltered behind lines of well-disciplined entrenched troops, or even turned to using mutated abhumans and heretical psychic barriers to try and block the way. The Blood Angels would always punch through the defenses and crush the enemies of the Emperor. We see this in-game with the first Blood Angels card that you will see, Orexis Veterans. A powerful unit that costs 6 energy and brings you 5 attack and 6 health. Stats that are slightly below average for the energy cost. They do have the familiar unstoppable keyword though, which helps compensate for this and means that they can bypass all frontline effects and directly hit the enemy warlord or the key units that the enemy has on the board. But that is not all. While Orexis veterans are in play, all other troops with Unstoppable gain plus one attack as well. We can expect the Blood Angels troop lineup to have a much higher number of Unstoppable troops than other factions and cards such as Orexis veterans will make those units even more deadly. Despite their well-earned reputation as excellent and loyal warriors of the Emperor, the Blood Angels of the Great Crusade era did harbour a shameful secret. Although the black rage that would afflict them in later years had not yet emerged amongst them, their gene seed had a defect which manifested itself as the Red Thirst. Some of the Blood Angels would lose themselves in the heat of battle as their battle brothers fell around them and be thrown into a bloody frenzy. We see this manifested in-game in a new mechanic, Requiem, which is unique to the Blood Angels. Behold Harem Squad, the first troop that we will see which has this. Harem Squad is otherwise unremarkable for an Astartes unit. It costs 2 energy and for that has very average stats with 2 attack and 2 health. But of course, what makes this troop stand out is the Requiem mechanic. When an adjacent troop dies, they will inflict 2 points of damage to a random enemy. I really like the way this mechanic will work. It is like giving its neighboring troops backlash when they die, regardless of whether it is during the enemy turn or your own turn, this effect will trigger. This makes it more reliable than sacrifice, which only triggers if the unit survives until your own turn when it can actually attack for itself. Of course, the drawback is that having a Requiem troop on its own on your board will do nothing for this mechanic. You must have a neighboring troop that will die to trigger this. Fortunately, there are also many troops now with effects such as Fast and Flank that will combo well with Requiem. Imagine, for example, a 5 energy play where first you put Harem Squad on the board for 2 energy, and then you play and attack with Goldstone's Hunters for a further 3 energy. This will do a total of 5 damage to your enemy, 3 damage to whoever Goldstone's Hunters attacks, and then their death will trigger Requiem which will inflict 2 points of damage to a random enemy as well. This will also leave you with Harem Squad still on the board. I'm really excited to see what other combos we will be coming up with using other Requiem troops as well. Today, you will also be seeing the first of the legendary cards for the Blood Angels, the Sword of Sanguinis, the Blade and Carmine. This is a 5 energy tactic which gives your Warlord the Bloodthirst trait, which allows him to attack twice. This is very similar to Mercy and Forgiveness for the Night Lords, which only costs 3 energy. So, what do you get for that extra 2 energy cost? 
Well, the answer of course is Requiem. And what an interesting Requiem ability it is too. You will gain plus one attack this turn each time one of your troops dies. What makes this really interesting in my opinion is that the consequence of the effect will be different depending on whether your troop dies during your own turn or during your enemy's turn. In your turn, you will be using this to attack with troops in a way that they die so that your warlord gets buffed up and can make a powerful pair of attacks. But in your enemy's turn, well, if your warlord is attacked after your units die, then he will be inflicting a lot more damage on the enemy units that hit him. Remember though, unlike some of the other temporary buffs that we see from warlords in this game, such as Space Wolves, the bonus stats do not last until your next turn, they only apply during the current player's turn. After seeing even just these first three cards for the Blood Angels, I'm really excited to see what else they will have, and I'm sure that you are too. There will be more reveals over the next week coming from other players, so be tuned to the Horus Heresy Legions game on their website, their Facebook, their Twitter, and their Discord for more information. The first Blood Angels event will be taking place this Friday, so I will see you on the battlefield then. Bye for now everyone.